Go ye. What does God expect of you? What does God want, want from you? Go ye. Amen. And that too was a powerful word. Amen. Yes. Then we get no number and be soon. And we went into the depths, the recesses of the mind. What are we thinking? What's going on in our thought process? Why are we thinking like we're thinking? We got to get our thinking together. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that's how we really closed out. Today, you've already heard a testimony from someone talking about how God restored their health, their sight, their strength. I mean, sounds to me like we're in the midst of some overcomers. Right. I'm telling you. Father wants you to know that you are an overcomer. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So I said that the Holy Spirit, if you let him orchestrate everything, if you just let him do it. Now we talked about her doing that uh, the latter part of last year, am I right? I didn't get the message. I didn't, number one, I didn't know what she was going to uh, uh, talk about. She was sharing quickly with me uh, about her illness and her this and things that had taken place and how God had brought her through and all of that. But I, I, I told us, I tell you what, you say, and we'll do that the first Sunday all right. in January. Well, T.J. Elman was on vacation all that time. <laughs> I went out to preach on the Christmas program day. I went out to come in and preach on Christmas day. So I chilled out. <laughs> and man, I had to do some praying and some hustling. I said, now, Father, you know I got to meet the people. I, I got to stand before the people. And I need something to tell the people. I need something to tell the people. Believe me, just like I waited to the last minute, he decided he would go away to the last minute. <laughs> and, what do you mean? Father, sin. I said, thank you, Jesus. I knew you loved me. I knew you loved me. Keys to being an overcomer. Keys to being an overcomer. My God, my God. And you know, God is doing a new thing. And he wants us, he wants us to perceive it. He wants us to understand it. He wants us to flow with him. Yes. And you know, that was a confession that we would make every time Pastor would stand. That we are uh, a chosen generation. We are royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are peculiar people. And we've been chosen to show forth the praises of the Lord God Almighty right here in this earth. He's, he's equipped us to do it. We are. Because we are overcomers to do it. Hallelujah. We are overcomers. More than overcomers. So I just thank God. I just thank God for this day. I thank God for, uh, uh, for transitioning me out of 2022 into 2023. That, that, that I didn't stop in 2022. Amen. Hey, thank God you didn't stop in 2022. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so today, you know, I just want to share with you what he shared with me. And uh, just walk with me. Amen. Just, just walk with me. Keys to being an overcome. Uh, turn with me, Mr. Uh, uh, Reader. Uh, Genesis 126. Let me start there. Genesis 126. How many of you glad you're here today? Yeah. How many of you glad you're here today? Yeah. I would not have missed the first Sunday in the year for nothing. Yeah. You, you ready? I don't think this is, is this, this on the machine? All right, come on. And God said. And God said. Let us make man in our image. Yes. After our life. Yes. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh, let, let us have do what? Dominion. What is dominion? Hmm. Being an overcomer. Yeah. We're not at the bottom. We're overcoming. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. And let man have dominion. Not the fish. Not the cow. Yeah. 
But man, come on. And let them have the dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Come on. What he said. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28. And God blessed them. Stop. The first, first words out of God's mouth that man heard, he was blessing. Amen. Not cursing. Amen. Not putting us down. Thank you, Lord. Not talking about us. Yes. He was blessing us. Thank you, Lord. The first words we heard from him were words of blessing. Come on. And God did what? And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and increase, multiply. Increase. Yeah. Increase. And replenish. All of that is dealing with increasing. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. All right. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. All right. And God saw everything that he had made. Everything that he had made included us. Yes. Come on. And behold, it was very good. And that means that we were good in the sight of God. Yes. Don't ever think, put yourself down. Don't ever, don't ever talk about yourself. Don't ever negate who, who you are and how God sees you. Don't ever talk about how God doesn't like you and, and you don't know why this happened to you. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. God said he made everything and then we were right there with that everything. That means that he said it was all good. That means we were right there in the bunch with the good. Amen. And God said, what saw what? In and verse God four. saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. It was. We are part of the very good. Amen. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. All right. Overcome. That means that we are the ones who prevail. All right. We are the ones who conquer. Amen. We're not the conqueror. We are the ones who conquer. Amen. We are the ones who overcome. We are the ones who always try. Amen. There's a scripture that goes with that. In Christ Jesus, we are the ones that try. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God for all those who always give us the victory. Amen. Amen. We always try. Throughout the years, our greatest heroes have always been those with the greatest challenges to overcome. The greatest heroes always have had those great challenges to overcome. There are those who overcame the doctor's diagnosis mm -hmm. of a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. But the patient overcame it. Mm -hmm. Others were caught in power wrecks. We heard about that today. And the jaws of life reached into the piles of metal and pulled them out. Still, there were those who have been caught in terrible snow avalanches and made it out only to be found by rescuers after days of being buried alive in the snow. And everybody that was buried alive in the snow all came out uh, telling their stories. Our characters today our characters today are no different. While everyone wants to be an overcomer and conquer something, are you listening? Many times the person or persons are typically upset when actually faced with something to conquer or overcome. All right, All right. Everybody want to be an overcomer. <laughs> but when you get something to overcome or yeah. conquer, you know, you want to draw back. All right. Yeah. Why did this happen to me? Mm -hmm. We want to enter into our pity party. Mm -hmm. But 
That's not why the challenge came. Okay? That is exactly what happened to Jesus' disciples when suddenly confronted with a rough, vile, tumultuous storm while crossing the Sea of Galilee that evening to the other side. Today I want to inform some, encourage others, that you are an overcome. Say, I am, I am an overcome. No matter what kind of storm you are facing in your life right now, and when I say right now, I mean right now. Doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how dark it is. It doesn't matter how difficult it looks. You are an overcomer. Say that. What an appropriate message to take with you today on the first day of the year. the Lord for just, you know, giving me something like that. And all I could do was say, Lord, you work this. I, I don't even know where to begin, but I know you know where to begin. Yeah. Yours could be a furious boss. Somebody that just, you know, no matter how good you do, how matter, or no matter how well you work, uh, they still not satisfied. Yours could be a marriage attack. Child going astray, or creditors being down your door now and charge too much. <laughs> or maybe you are struggling against stormy, unrelenting winds in your health or emotions. With Jesus, you are an overcomer. We don't have to succumb to none of that that was just mentioned. Bad friendships. Folk that, that, that seem to be just always picking at you. But you know what? You are an overcomer. Yes. In Mark, the fourth chapter, let's turn there. Lord Jesus, Mark, the fourth chapter. I'm not going to be before you very long. But I'm going to share what God shared with me. Hallelujah. In Mark, the fourth chapter, it begins and ends with Jesus' teaching. And in that chapter, I circle about six different subject matters that he covered. All right? He started by teaching a parable about sowing the word in those different types of soil. And he even talked about uh, lighting candle, lighting a candle and, and, and uh, he shared with the disciples that there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be made known. He just went from one subject matter to another. And he talked about and something our pastor used to tell us, be careful what you hear. Mm. He used to tell us that. Be careful what you hear. He even covered that. He taught in parables which were teachings put beside truths to explain them more clearly. That's what a parable is. It's a type of teaching that's put beside truths in God's word, truths in uh, daily living that will explain the parable more clearly, okay? Our message begins, the actual message begins in Mark 4.35. And I needed Genesis 1.26 to let you know that we've been created to be overcomers and the ones in dominion. Okay? Our message begins in Mark 35 when after a long day of teaching he said to his disciples a word. Now we're going to find out what happened. Verse 35. And the same day when the evil was come and the same day when the evil was come what happened? said unto them let us pass over unto the other side. Now, I need to really just touch on this. Jesus said, let us pass over unto the other side. He didn't say, y'all go to the other side. He didn't say, I, 
y'all y'all start passing to the other side and I'll meet you over there. He said, let us, the us with all of us that are, that are gathered here, all the disciples, me and all my disciples, we are going to pass over to the other side. We're going to do that. We're not going to be stopped, shipwrecked, or overturned in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Are y'all listening to me? We, we are going. These words, they're written in, work in red, they came from Jesus. He said, we let us pass over unto the other side of this lake. Okay? Come on. And when they had sent away the multitude, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Right here, let me explain this. Jesus had ministered to multitudes from day until now it is evening. Okay? He, he, had, he had been ministered. And he had been ministering all day long. And so the disciples sent, sent away the multitudes. They took him even as he was in the ship. They sent away the multitudes and they, uh, they, 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 Jesus, who had, who was probably decompressing. I, I know he was exhausted. He was worn out. He was, because you know he was human and he still. Right. Okay. He was worn out. He was exhausted. And so the word is saying, and when the and when they had sent away the multitude, they took Jesus even as he was in the ship, tired, worn out, ready to rest his body, uh, not uh, not ministering anymore, not trying to ask questions anymore. He they took him even in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships beside. In Mark 4.37, let's see what happens. They in the ship now. Jesus is tired. He's worn out. You know, he's not ministering anymore. And I believe he's just sitting there in that ship. Kind of like what, uh, what I would do, what Pastor would do uh, when we got home. Just kind of sit for a few minutes and be good rest. And, you know, after preaching, after ministering. After praying for folk, just kind of decompress. Yeah. And so that's what Jesus was doing. Okay? Now, now, uh, now watch this. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Now read it in the Amplified. And a furious storm of wind, a hurricane of fortune arose. See, we can understand that. That strong wind is said and a furious uh, wind, a, a furious wind rose up, a hurricane proposals. Amen. And what happened? And the waves kept beating into the boat, so that it was already becoming filled. And the waves kept beating into the boat. It was uh, so that it, the boat was becoming filled already. Church, the tempest on the Sea of Galilee that evening had become so fierce that the boat was nearly filled. And the terrified disciples thought that they were going to drown. Are you listening to me? They immediately started thinking death. We're not going to make it across this sea of Galilee. We're not going to make it. These winds are fierce. This water is coming in this ship. Man, we, we, we need to do something. But what can we do? My question to you today is, who sent the storm? I, I, who, who sent the storm? Anybody know? Take the problem out. Thank you. The devil? Yeah. Jesus said, let us pass to the other side. Mm -hmm. right, right. Don't think that he didn't hear 
those words. Don't think that he didn't start working to try to make it not happen. Do you realize Jesus' is, Jesus is disciples, all of them plus him, was all in the boat? Do you know that the enemy was ready to stop, but it was, was getting ready to start in this earth realm to win souls and make disciples and, and increase the kingdom of God? That's the same identical way storms come into our lives. God is not sending storms into our lives. Say amen. Our reaction when storms pop up out of nowhere. Things happen out of nowhere.
to remember what God has promised you. Amen. God is not a man. He cannot lie. Uh, he doesn't have a lying program in it. All right? So whatever he has promised you, you can count on it. You can count on it. This particular scriptural account begins with Jesus saying in Mark 4.35, let us go over to the other side. Right. Let us go over to the other side. Jesus said nothing about losing one disciple on the way to the other side. Amen. Any, he didn't say anything about anybody drowning, being cast overboard. He didn't say anything about loss. He said, we're going to go over to the other side. But he did say, we're going to the other side of, of the lake, and we're going to all make it. Amen. If the disciples had been paying attention, they would have noticed Jesus' resolve to bring them over, not to let them go under. Right. If they had been paying attention. Victor to victory. Jesus is not a trickster. Mm -hmm. He does not play games with people's lives. Lord. I must say this. Yes. He says what he means and he means what he says. Yes. You know that Jesus chose these disciples with purpose. Yes. If you remember, he went through the gospel, picking them out. Yes. Found one under the tree. Yeah. Got other from uh, uh, having or uh, fish all night. Yes. But he went through picking them out. Yes. He chose them with purpose. Mm -hmm. For purpose. Mm -hmm. And to fulfill purpose mm -hmm. on this earth. The same way he has chosen each one of us. Yes. You have been chosen. We shared that with you in 2022. He has chosen you for purpose with purpose and he's chosen you to fulfill your purpose on this earth yes. now let me qualify something my purpose and your purpose are not the same yes. i have a purpose for being on this earth and so do you yes. you can't fulfill my purpose and you know what i can't fulfill yours yes. turn with me to jeremiah 29 in love the King James Version. Read that for me, read it. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, okay. say the Lord. Okay. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Let me read this God's Word translation. Same scripture. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. This is the Lord talking. He got plans for us. Yes. Amen. They are plans for peace and not disaster. Okay. Right. I, you know, all of that, that, that word disaster is in direct relationship to this storm that we're talking about. All right? Yes. Yes. They're, they're plans of, for peace and not disaster. Plans to give you a future filled with hope. He's not here. He, he, he's not the kind of God, the kind of God we serve is not trying to dash our hope. He's not trying to eliminate our expectations. He wants us to have big expectations. He wants us to uh, have big uh, 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 hope. He wants us to be big hearted. He wants us to uh, really expect big things to happen in our lives. I'm convinced Jesus has the same plan for you and me. These fellows were not chosen so they could drop or uh, drop or uh, drown, excuse me, in the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. Right, that, right. that was not why God for Jesus went by picking 12 disciples out. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know what? You are not going to drown on the way to your destination either. Yeah. Right. Did you hear what I say? You're yeah. not drowning on the way to yours. He said we're going to the other side, and Jesus said we would arrive to the other side safely. It we're in one piece. Because he got some plans for us. Yes. He said we we're going to the other side. Jesus said we will ride to the other side. No matter how scary the storm may seem in your life right now, I'm telling you, no matter how 
is looking, how overwhelming it might seem, upsetting, overpowering, or invading into your life at, at this time. Remember the promise of Jesus. He said that you are going to the other side. There's some things happening in your family right now. There are some things happening on your job right now. There are some things happening uh, in, in relationships right now. But Jesus said that you are more than a conqueror, that you are an overcomer, that you are going to prevail, and you are going to the other side. He said you're going to the other side of the financial crisis. And disease. Yes. You're going to the other side of COVID 19, Corona, and RSV. You're going to the other side of the flu season. You are going to the other side. You're going to the other side of any kind of hormonal storms that your children may be going through or you may be going through. You're going to the other side. They ain't disappointed. Yeah, I'm going there. They ain't disappointed. A marriage is hard. You are going to the other side of it all. You can be confident that he will bring you safely to the other side of the sea. Lord Jesus. Key number two. Leave the crowd behind. <laughs> the scripture here says, and when they had sent away who? Uh -huh. The multitudes. They, that was the crowd. Uh -huh. That was all them folk that Jesus had ministered to. When they had sent away the multitudes, they took Jesus as if he was a baby. When I read this, they took him as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Lord Jesus. He was just sitting there in the ship. If, let me tell you, leave the crowd behind. If you are truly an overcome, it is unlikely you will also be Mr. or Mrs. Popularity. Are y'all listening to me? Don't look for it. When you are following the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are following the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. when you are living by the word of God, yeah. when you refuse to lean to the left or to the right mm -hmm. or let someone pull you into this uh, right. situation mm -hmm. and pull you into that situation mm -hmm. and pull you off course into this financial uh, plan, into that financial plan and, and into this, you know, and that and the other, but you got your eyes on the prize mm -hmm. and the prize is the word. You are not going to be very popular. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're not going to be popular at all. Mm -hmm. Not with them. No. Mm -hmm. Verse 36 describes the disciples as leaving the crowd behind. Mm -hmm. Thank God they had enough sense and presence of mind to do that much for the Savior. Yeah. To leave that crowd behind. Why would this statement be so significant? I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. This statement is important because a lot of people in the crowd are not on track to be overcome. Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. They are content to live mediocre, yeah. uneventful, mm -hmm. average, ordinary, mm -hmm. and somewhat dull and unproductive lives. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. And if you are going to accomplish all that God has called you to do, if you are going to fulfill your assignment, you will have to leave these folk behind, church. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that you don't love them. Amen. You want things, you want the better for them. Yeah. But if they're not ready to take on the better, it's better behind. I guarantee you, they will be right where you left them if you ever go back there. I'm just being honest with you. But you got to realize God has separated you. And you didn't separate
separate you. The Holy Spirit separated you. Living in righteousness separated you. What is your way God separated you? What is the love of God separated you? What is the do what God has called you to do has separated you. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. You didn't separate yourself. Jesus did. Why? Because your time for being out there hanging out. I got a, a work for you to do. Yes, Lord. Rather than risk facing any storms so many times uh, on their journey to the other side, they would prefer to eliminate the risk facing any storms of life and take the safer route or easy way out. They're not gonna take, they're not gonna take on the storms like you do. They would rather just let me out here. <laughs> You will never make a significant impact if you refuse to take risks. Amen. Face your obstacles and venture out into the deep waters. We are overcomers. Right. Say, I'm an overcomer. Right. Look at Mark 436. Read that in the Amplified. And leave the throne. They took him with them. Just as he was in the boat in which he was sitting, and other boats were with him. You know, he was just sitting in the boat, chilling out, trying to regroup. You know, it, it signifies to me that he had taken, uh, separated himself to take a shower down in the bottom of the boat or nothing. He had to take a shower, no bath, had refreshed himself after ministering to all the bones of people. Remember, he started that, like I said earlier, earlier that day, and here it was, evening time. Jesus was sitting in the boat. Maybe he was just waiting until the disciples got settled and situated on the boat before he retreated to the hinder part of the, of the ship. Maybe he was just waiting to everybody got settled. You know, he, he's compassionate and loving and concerned about something. Mark 437. King James. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Verse 38. And he was in the hidden part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Master, carest not, excuse me, carest thou not that he perish? Are y'all listening to this? Now, this is the same Jesus that said, let us pass over to the other side. Now, we're talking about perishing. Turn to Psalm 27, 9, Amplified, read it. Hide not your face from me. I can see that disciple who went rushing down to that hinder part of the ship to wake Jesus up, all excited, all upset, with nothing but fear in him, on him, all around him, crying out like this. This is a psalm of David, and this is what he was crying out. Hide not your face from me. Jesus, uh, the word of God in one of these uh, translations said that he's, his head was laying on a pillow. I wouldn't be surprised if his head was underneath that pillow. He said, hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. See, I can just hear him now, all excited, all fearful, all scared, all upset, all uptight. Your servant, turn not your servant away in anger. You who have been my help. He is not in past this. Jesus is alive. You who are my help. Cast me not off. Don't send me back upstairs. Don't, don't, don't force me back into all that water. The water is taking over the boat. He said, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Ha, see, he wasn't thinking. How in the world was Jesus going to forsake him and everybody on the boat in the storm? All right, all right. At any time, he could have commanded the sea, which he, you'll see, 
He could have managed to see the waters. And they could all get out the boat and start walking on the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, in our desperate moments. Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody see where I'm going. Yeah. When we are most desperate. Yeah. When we are most fearful. Yeah. When we are most uh, undecisive. Jesus alone nearby 
is not going to work. There are people who attend church or other religious events to get in the vicinity of Christ. Getting in the vicinity is not good enough. Yet they have never really invited him into their own boat. Are y'all listening? Until a storm hits, they feel safe enough with the status quo, but the storm reveals how dangerous it is to assume Jesus is in your boat when he truly and really is not. You find out if you really got Jesus with you in, 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 inside. Let something happen. Let an emergency come up. It goes back to one of those messages I preached. What are you saying? What are you saying? You got to make sure Jesus is in your boat. He is the salvation. He is the Savior. He is the hope. He is the deliverer. He is the healer. He is the Yes. 
said to him, do you Anybody need any kind of prayer today? Any kind? Yes, sir. For anything? Yes, sir. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this new year. Yes, thank you for these our people that showed up. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, for pronouncing a special blessing, Father God, for the rest of this year, not just for, for today, but for the rest of this year, Father God, just being in place. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise and give you glory right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word that has fallen into rich for the soul. Thank you for the people, Father God, that were here to hear this word, receive it, Father God, believe it. And now going forth in it, knowing, Father God, that you love us. Yes. Knowing, Father God, that you made us, Father God, and, and you know all about us inside and out. You made us, Father God, dominions over uh, and overcomers. And overcomers. You made us to have dominion, and you made us to be overcomers. And I thank you, Lord. That is how we leave here. Repeat after me, Father, Father, I know without Jesus I'm lost. I, I don't want to be lost. I want to be saved. I, I repent of all sins. I and I believe you are the Lord God of the universe. And because I have repented, be the Lord God of my life. I believe you shed your blood for me. I believe you died for me. And I believe you were resurrected for me. Be the Lord God of my life right now. Jesus, I call it on your name. And according to your word, right now, at this moment, I am saved. I'm not hoping to be saved. I'm not wishing I'm saved. I'm not trying to be saved. I am saved. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.